Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Poets and Quants online MBA panel. Today, we're talking with experienced professionals who decided to pursue their online MBA, and we're joined by a great group of alumni um, who are going to be able to tell us about their experience. Please feel free to use the Q&A function to submit any questions um, for the panelists, and if we have time at the end of the session, we will try to get to those. Well, let's begin by getting to know our panelists. Uh, Welcome and thank you for joining us today and sharing your, um, your experience. Uh, we'll start by just taking a minute or two to introduce yourself, tell us where you work, what your role is, your online MBA program, and if you'd like, please add a fun fact as well. Uh, so Leela, we'll start with you, please. Sure. Hi, thanks for having me here. I am uh, Leela Breithaupt, and I am the new executive director of the Bach Choir of Bethlehem, which is a nonprofit arts organization in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, near New York and, and Philly. And um, I'm new. I just started this job in July um, 1st of, of last year. Um, I, did, I earned my online MBA from the Kelly Business School at Indiana University. And a fun fact, um, I love to hike and I've hiked the Himalayas and the Alps and the Rockies. <laughs> Very good. Travis, Thanks. what about you? Nice to meet everybody. Uh, my name is Travis Baldwin. I graduated from JWMI with my MBA. I'm currently a director of global business development for our capital goods sector for a Norwegian based but global software organization. Um, I also sit on two boards and I've started up my own company as well. So pretty busy with all that. And I guess a fun fact about me is one of my early undergrads was in going to art school. And my ultimate dream is just to make enough money that I can retire and be a broke artist on the beach. <laughs> Holly, how about you? Yeah, thanks very much for having me. I'm Holly McKenna. I graduated from um, the online program at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, I'm currently the uh, VP of Sales and Marketing at SUFA, which is a seed stage startup born out of MIT um, and based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We focus on solar powered advertising kiosks. Um, I was I transitioned into this role midway through my MBA, so it was it was quite hectic. Um, and I'd say a fun fact about myself: I'm a bit of an adventure junkie, so I love going skydiving, cliff jumping, all those crazy things to keep me on my toes. Oh wow! And uh, Claire. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having me here. It's nice to meet you all. My name is Claire Moore, and I'm located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's about halfway between Atlanta and Nashville, which you've probably maybe heard of, not so much Chattanooga, but um, I'm in management and IT for a federal utility, the Tennessee Valley Authority, and we provide power to seven different states and about um, 10,000 employees. And as mentioned, I'm in IT, and I've been in this role since about August. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, thank you again all for joining us today. Um, you know, let's just start by um, talking us through kind of the decision ma making process of why you wanted to pursue an online NBA and um, whether you considered a full time program or a specialized master's as well. Uh, Leela, let's go ahead and start with you. Yeah, it's actually a really good question. I, um, I lived in Bloomington, Indiana for 25 years. My husband is a professor at IU. And so when I was looking at an MBA program, I actually looked at both uh, because IU has um, the in you know the in-house program and then and then the online program. The reason I chose the online program is because pe my my fellow students would be at a, a more advanced level in their careers, and I was far outside of um, being a student myself, I, having graduated you know a number of years ago. I wanted that kind of connection and teamwork environment with people who who are farther along in their careers and at a similar stage um, to me. And I also wanted access to colleagues, um, fellow students who were from around the world, um, living around the world and not taking time off to, to study. So they were still in it. It made it very exciting. So that's what I'll share for right now. Absolutely. Travis, what about you? 
Well, I'd say very similar to Leah, and you're probably going to hear that theme, but it was the flexibility. I did look at a lot of brick and mortar, you know, traditional approaches. The problem was for me is I was very locked into my career already, which was requiring 50, 60 hours a week was pretty normal, plus a lot of global travel. I never knew where in the world I was going to be on a week by week basis. So the idea of showing up to a classroom every Tuesday at three o'clock for a lecture just was not going to work for me. So then it became the looking at, okay, what are the online options or virtual options, things that could solve that? And I knew I still wanted a top tier school. So that definitely narrowed the scope down as far as candidates. So that kind of led me on that journey. Yeah, absolutely. Holly, what do you have to add? Yeah, it's a similar theme, but um, I'll go back to just my initial search. Um, I was at a company called Vistaprint for 10 years. It was the only company I'd worked for. I was mainly in a sales only track. So um, I knew I started wanting to look for an MBA opportunity so I could expand my scope and, and get into more, more opportunities in, in my career. So um, that's what the impetus was of looking for it. And then um, I mentioned I was um, my company is based in Boston, Massachusetts. That's where I lived my entire life. But um, I was actually planning on moving to Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where my husband's from. So I knew I was moving. I knew I couldn't stay put in a certain place. So online was the only option. Um, and I also wasn't going to stop working either. So I needed that flexibility to continue, um, you know, working and which is actually a huge benefit of this opportunity because you can immediately apply what you learn to your day-to-day -day work. Um, so that was huge for me. Right, absolutely. And uh, Claire. So I'll echo uh, what a lot of other people have said. The biggest thing for me was really the flexibility. I did consider doing um, a full-time in-person program, but where I am, the options for that were pretty limited. So online opened up a lot of different doors for me. And I knew that working full-time and having a family, it would afford me you know, a lot more options of when I had to do my schoolwork versus as Travis mentioned, you know, being in a certain place at a certain time. Absolutely. Well, um, do any of you, um, can you talk a little bit about the, you know, the calculations that you, um, that you considered um, when deciding whether this huge investment would be worth it in kind of an ROI standpoint? And Travis, we'll, we'll start with you. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's obviously one of the biggest reasons we're pursuing an MBA is we're looking for something at the end of that rainbow. Uh -huh. um, so that really, I just did a lot of research on the roles I was in and the roles that I could get, but was limited to getting at the time due simply to that credentials. Those three letters definitely open up a lot of doors and a lot of potential uh -huh. upward migration. Um, but when I started looking at what the typical salary ranges were there, you know, and the low hundreds kind of on up versus where I was at at the time in the, in the eighties, that's a pretty good delta. So you start looking yeah. at the cost of the education and you're like, well, if I can just get this, my payback period should be roughly two years or a little less or whatever, and I'm in a good spot. So based on that rationale, I, I jumped in on the program and actually in the course of going through the program, got three promotions and I just got my second one uh, about a month ago, post-graduation. So five total. Um, I can say that my pay now is definitely more than double what I started the journey off with. So that payback period for me was very minimal. Um, definitely still keeps paying dividends. So if you're looking at a rationale for going forward at any MBA program, because there's a lot of good ones on the call today, that's a pretty good metric to go by and it can be transformational. Absolutely. That is, um, that is quite a ROI for that. <laughs> um, Holly, what about you? Yeah, pretty similar story. I mean, I, again, I was at the same company for so long um, and didn't really have an opportunity to grow in my role and at the company itself. So that that was enough for me to say what I'm going to learn here, here will give me opportunities elsewhere. And um, very similar, did some research on the roles that I'd be able to expand to and what the market looked like. And um, it has certainly paid for itself at this point. Yeah. Uh, Claire, is your experience similar? It is. So I've been at my current company for about 10 years now, but there definitely are certain positions where they really are looking for you to have a master's degree. So I knew that, you know, for my personal growth, if those were things that I was interested in, that this was going to make sense for me to go ahead and make the investment into Auburn and into my MBA. And I'll say that, like, as I was searching for the online programs, that is one thing that stood out to me immediately. Um, it was very noticeable, the value, I think, for the cost of the tuition um, for Auburn in their ranking versus a lot of the other similarly ranked schools. So that was hugely appealing to me as well. Yeah. And how about you, Leela? 
Yeah, similar. I, I mean, I was a, a classical performing musician at the time, and I actually started two new jobs while I was um, doing my MBA and then this this current one. So I my salary has increased by by probably about 50 percent. And I have the added stability that I have one job instead of many different jobs as a performing musician. Um, in addition, I think that there's the value of in, when you're working in a nonprofit, you deal with boards mm -hmm. and being, you can certainly reach the level of executive management without an MBA, but it really helps to be able to speak the language with the same language with the other board members that you're trying to um, work with. So that was an added thing that I was looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Holly, we'll send this next question to you first. Um, can you just talk about the, you know, the the key factor or differentiator for um, your program that made you choose it? Yeah, that's it's a tough one because I really only looked into two programs, and one was hybrid, so um, it was a pretty easy decision for me. Um, and I think at the MBA at UNC was ranking one of the top at the time. And I, I believe is still the number one online program right now. So that was, that was a primary factor for me. Um, and moving to the Carolinas, I thought it would be a, a good opportunity to start, um, you know, meeting some people in the area, even though a lot of people were still remote. I had um, classmates that were in all different countries, which was really exciting. Some of them were calling in, in the middle of their night because the, um, the time was just based on East Coast. So right. yeah, proximity and um, how strong the program was was why I chose UNC. Yeah, what about you, Claire? Yeah, so similar, when I started researching, I'll be really honest, I Googled, you know, top online MBA programs was kind of <laughs> step one. And as I started scrolling through that list, I was really excited when I saw Auburn because I'm from the Southeast. I grew up in Alabama, so I recognized the name immediately. And then I mentioned the tuition. I saw that, which looked pretty good. Um, but the thing that I think really locked me in as I kind of dug into learning a little more about the program was the fact that um, Auburn started their distance program in 1989, I believe, which is pretty impressive. Um, so some of the professors like to tell stories about how they originally recorded things on VHS and like mailed tapes to people, um, <laughs> which is sounds crazy, but is pretty cool. Um, but I love that their program was the same, whether you are a full-time on-campus student or an online student, it's the same lectures, the same assignments, the same coursework. And that was really, really important to me. So that was kind of the ultimate like factor for my decision. Yeah. Um, and uh, Lila, what about you? Um, similar, I, I was looking for the, the quality of faculty who were teaching the classes. And at Kelly, they put their most seasoned professors into teaching these um, IU, uh, the, the Kelly online um, MBA programs, because I think that they realize the, the discernment of the students and, the, and what they're trying to get out of it. And, and it just, it's really true. I had an amazing faculty um, teaching most of my, um, or, or all of my classes. Another thing that I was looking for was um, an international immersion component. And the Kelly's program has that. They have a number of classes where um, you get to get to either consult with an international company or you get to have um, it's kind of a survey of going around at different businesses. So those are the two major, major things that I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, Travis, do you have anything to add? I do. There was, uh, I guess, a couple things that I would look at and say these were key differentiators for me for the, for the JWMI program, but ultimately all roads lead to Jack. Um, it was kind of one of those things. I looked at all the programs out there. And the reason I called to me is I come from a long line of entrepreneurs. Growing up, my dad was always giving me the Jack Welch books to read and to talk about. So when I was in the search for an MBA program and I actually saw the LinkedIn messaging coming up about JWMI, I clicked. I was like, Jack Welch MBA, what's going on? Because it was such an unknown name. But once I actually dug in and talked to the admissions, I realized it wasn't just his name on the billboard. It was Jack all the way through the program. When he left GE, and for those that aren't familiar, number one you know, CEO of the century, created by Fortune Magazine and everything. And his impact to GE, taking them to number one, was huge. And he held it there for decades. You know, So that really showed the power of his messaging, the approach, et cetera. And now more Fortune 500 CEOs are out there that came out from under Jack Welch than anybody else. So those impact, those principles are real, they're time proven. 
but it was more than just learning from a great mentor. Jack, when he left GE, taught at MIT for a couple of years at their program and loved it. But his main concern is he didn't get to touch enough people because not everybody can get into MIT. You know, great school, but there's a certain level of cutoff there. So he wanted it accessible so that any working professional that wants to take and accelerate their career to that next level could take part in that. And he was ultimately involved in the development of all the curriculum, the classes, everything else, in addition to tons of his friends that do industry experts and Warren Buffett and people that come and there's lectures within the class on these different subjects. So it was, it was Jack, his mode, his methodology, it was the curriculum he had his, fin his fingers into to build out. And then ultimately the approach that JWMI has with the professors. Every professor there is not just someone with the certifications to teach and the P PhDs, although they have them. They're also individuals that have spent decades in the real world at executive levels at Fortune 500 companies leading them. So in the coursework, the whole program at JWMI is designed to give you all the case studies and the knowledge and the tools you get with traditional MBAs, but then bring that to you via a professor that's been there and done that. It's not just case studies. It's when you try to implement, you've got to watch out for this. This is going to be the change management. These are going to be the hurdles. These are the things that are going to throw you off. So your classroom discussions are about how do you take what you've learned that week and apply it to your life, your role, your company. And you spend the week focusing on that, talking about it, learning from each other. And then you go back the very next week and you can put it in motion. And that's where all the success that I mentioned earlier came from, as well as over 70% of the students at JWMI getting promotions just while going through the program. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, you know, we'll start with Claire for this next round of question um, questions, but I'm curious about with all of you having several years in the workforce, what do you say to um, prospective students who think they've been out of undergrad too long or and are concerned about, you know, being ready for an MBA for an online MBA? Claire, go ahead. Yeah, that's a great question. It's definitely something that weighed heavily on my mind. Um, for me personally, I had said, you know, since I was a kid that I was going to get a master's degree. And then I said PhD, but we won't go into that. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I always thought I'd do it a little sooner than I did, but life happened and I had a great job and, you know, I got married and started a family. Um, so when I finally said, hey, you know, it's time for me to go back, I was definitely worried about, you know, I haven't been in school in a long time. Am I rusty? Am I going to be able to keep up? Is this bad timing? Have I missed my window? Um, I will say for me, what I learned really pretty quickly after getting into this program is that I got more out of it personally. I really believe that I did because I had that frame of reference. Um, there were many times in a team or, you know, or in a group assignment and we would be having conversations and there were some students who had come straight through, which is also great. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I had a very different perspective than they did. Um, and so I grew to kind of appreciate that I had given it a little time in between because I think it really helped me walk away with even more. Absolutely. Um, Leela, was that, did you find a similar experience? Definitely. Um, I'm a lifelong learner, as I think a lot of us are. And you get so much out of life if you look at it that way. And you don't look at the deficits that could come from being out of school for a long time. You look at what you've done during that time, all the skills, all the experience, and the, the kind of hunger for learning more. Yeah. And I think if you approach um, a new study after you've been out of school for a long time with just an openness and a curiosity, you're going to go very far. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Travis. Yeah, ultimately, when I when I hear questions like that, because I, I am heavily involved in our, our, you know, networking and stuff still with the school and a lot of students coming in and people looking at the program. And we do hear that question a lot from people, believe it or not, working professionals. But for me, when I hear that question, it's almost like the iceberg, because what I'm really hearing is not should I, but do I have the confidence in myself to move forward? Mm -hmm. And I think for everybody that's listening on this call, I will say, regardless of the MBA program you pick, assuming it's accredited, it's a quality one like the ones on these calls, you can't go wrong with improving yourself and investing in yourself for tomorrow. So the only thing that you're putting off by not choosing to go forward is the potential of what you can be your best self and the doors that are going to open up for you. Absolutely. And Holly, anything to add? Yeah, I definitely agree with everyone. Um, I had the opportunity. I went, I did my undergrad at Bentley University. It's a small business school um, in New England. 
and I actually was enrolled in the five-year program is what they called it, which was an immediate MBA for one year right after undergrad. And I am still to this day so, so glad that I didn't move forward with that um, because it really would have just been continued classes a little bit more difficult than what I had just learned in my undergrad because it was business-based mm -hmm. waiting many, many years after. And then enrolling, I had, just like Claire said, I had a framework to actually apply what I learned immediately. Um, and, and to that end, and kind of going back to what Travis mentioned, it, it doesn't really matter what time or how far along you are in your career. I loved that within the program, there were individuals at every stage of life every age you could imagine, uh, because it really helped me learn. I learned from every background. There were um, many different military folks in my program, um, doctors, people from you know healthcare, people that had absolutely no business background and other people that had been in business for 20, 30 years. So um, that actually enriches the program. And I, I love that part of it. So it doesn't matter um, how far along you are, just go for it. Yeah. Great advice. I think for a lot of things, um, not just going back to school. Um, Lilo, tell us, take us a little bit inside the program um, and the learning experience. You know, what were the classes like? How how were you able to interact with professors and classmates in the online format? So the, the classes were um, typically uh, synchronous. There were very few asynchronous classes. Mm -hmm. And I had to kind of work them out when I was picking which classes I would put in, um, in the order that they would fit into my schedule. Um, there were some asynchronous sections, but largely class uh, classes were in person. Um, and then a lot of teamwork. So if you have a team with people in Europe, people in Asia, people in the US on both, you know, like on both coasts, it's, it becomes part of what you learn in the class to figure out how to manage, you know, um, everybody's time schedules and still get the um, deliverable done. <laughs> um, <laughs> The other thing that I wanted to mention there is that the teamwork aspect to the classes was really stressed at Kelly. And I um, appreciated, I think Holly mentioned how much she learned from other people in the class. I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, you probably will learn more from your compatriots and, and your fellow students than you will from your professors or from reading any books. And that's just um, a benefit of being in, exposed to all these different kinds of people in, in these online programs, in the online MBA programs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Travis, what was your classroom experience like? Fantastic. Uh, very similar in some ways to what Leela described, but the difference with JWMI is the model of education is designed to make it uh, digestible for you when you're ready. Mm -hmm. It is a completely virtual environment. Everything is asynchronous so that you are able to get in when you're at your best or when you have the time that day to get into what you need to do. So the way the courseworks are set up, it's on a quarter system. You get 10 weeks of class, a little two-week break, and it, it rolls over throughout or three weeks, I guess, how it folds over. Um, but the coursework itself, there's you get videos with the professors, the presentations, stuff from Jack Welch, stuff from other CEOs, Warren Buffett, et cetera, you watch, and material case studies to read, et cetera, all the usual stuff. And you're able to digest that at your time and watch the videos, the recordings, the lectures on your time as it suits you as well. And then you go into the discussion board where you talk about the questions posed for the week, the lessons learned, what's going on, and then how those directly apply to you and the questions back and forth with your course, your classmates. I had some concerns about that at first because I really felt that being used to a brick and mortar education style, I really thought I was going to be missing a lot of components with that. Mm -hmm. um, it was a good program and I needed the flexibility. So I jumped in and I'm glad I did because what I realized is it's actually very immersive. Yeah. Uh, which was quite surprising because those discussion classes when you're interacting, JWMI is number one for diversity because the, the student body thousand, you know, spread all over the world, but that's what makes it so great is you have people from all different walks of life, different cultures coming together, different perspectives, approaches to solving problems. And all this goes over to what Holly was speaking about earlier with broadening those perspectives, your, your, your problem solving capabilities, and you're learning from each other. And like Layla mentioned, almost just as much as from the curriculum and from the professors. Yeah. So they're getting world-class professors, number one, three years in a row. We're very proud of that, but they have the competencies 
you know, what their, their degrees, but also the real life experience to bring that to the table. You're surrounded and immersed by tons of type A's and people in all different walks of life coming and bringing this in. Then you've got top flight curriculum going along with it. So it's an incredibly immersive experience. But the beauty is you can do it when you're ready. You post a question up or an answer to something at 10 a.m. Maybe that person doesn't respond to what becomes 3 a.m. your time because they're on the other side of the world. But you see that you post and you go back and forth and you're having real discussions. And in a brick and mortar classroom, what you typically find is the professor speaking, everybody's busy trying to write your notes, get it all down. And you meet afterwards to go over stuff and try and study. And you might have the same four or five people constantly raising their hands up whenever the professor asks a question. Well, the vast majority of either introverts, everybody else scrambling to take notes is just in the back trying to soak it all in. But the beauty of this model of JWMI is everyone has a voice. There is no four or five people constantly answering while everybody else stays quiet. Everybody's responding, everybody's engaged, everybody's typing. And even the most introverted individual can feel a little bit more confident and capable to type their thoughts out sometimes than having to speak in front of a group. So yeah. enriching, very real dialogue, and it quickly becomes a safe place where people start talking about real world problems they're facing and coming to the table with solutions as a group. So quite engaging, quite fun. Holly, did you um, have a chance to answer this question yet? I, I kind of lost track. Not, not yet. Um, mine is, is kind of a mix of the previous two. So uh, once a week we had live class, that was our synchronous class um, and everybody needed to be there and everybody needed to participate. So that was every single class, no matter what the subject was, you needed to participate and that was part of your grade. So if you sat there behind your screen, I obviously had to have your camera on um, and didn't participate, you could potentially fail the class. Um, so at least once every single class you had to participate in the live session. Um, prior to every week's live session, you had to do your asynchronous work, which was it ranged between, I'd say, two and five hours per class per week. And that was recorded videos of the professor, um, potentially activities that you'd have to do in between. And then projects would be due that were every single subject also had a group project. Even for something like accounting or finance, you had a group project for all of it. Um, and that's when, you know, it, very challenging parts of the night or even really early in the morning, depending on who was in your group, you needed to set up a meeting time and hop on a Zoom. And that's when you learn the most. So it was super immersive, even being completely virtual. Um, so I was... Yeah. Even with, you know, having to do all the networking remotely, um, I was able to meet hundreds of people that I worked with throughout the couple of years that I was in the program. Well, kind of piggybacking on the, this idea of learning a lot from your class, as much from your classmates as you might from your professor, um, can anyone share um, like an example of something that they, uh, concrete that they learned from a classmate that um, has been really valuable to you? or conversely about how the network of students that you were able to connect with had um, you've been able to leverage um, since, le since leaving the program. And, um, you know, we'll just start with Travis on this one, please. Uh, certainly, well, from a networking perspective, there's been a lot of fun things happening at JWMI. There's we actually had 77 different networking events last year, even during COVID. So it's a very engaged community. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about that global environment is the alumni actually stay heavily involved as well. So even as a student, when you're coming to the networking, you're getting to meet not only alumni, but current students and also people from the other side of the world who you may have never went through the program with or anything else. So it's a great way to connect. As far as results of that, I've seen tons of people get jobs, change jobs, switch over, you know, as they're recruiting, putting stuff up. So that's all wonderful. Been making wonderful friends along the way, uh, of course. And learning experience from uh, classmates, I could probably go on a long, long list of that. <laughs> uh, that pops to mind. One of my classmates, he actually was... Uh, he leads up the nuclear program in the Navy at the time. And we were in the strategy class talking about financing and specifically pricing strategies. Or sorry, we were in a strategy class talking about pricing, uh, moving that through. And we were going on a, a particular case study at the time with GM and a new pricing of a vehicle. And should you lower the price, raise it, whatever. And uh, he ended up coming in with something they were looking at with a cost analysis point. And that led to one of our professors, uh, Professor Brooks at the time, who was the ex-CFO of Procter Gamble. And he kind of started talking about cannibalization 
of your own market share and, and how that affects pricing strategy. So this was totally off the curriculum and everything else, but it ended yeah. up leading to like this 40 thread engagement of all these people coming <laughs> and learning all this wonderful stuff from it. But I think it's that flexibility in the program to take a topic and in that dialogue and in that DQ, it just kind of becomes alive. And where it goes, it goes. You know, the professors that yeah. put hard rails up, but it really is that immersive learning experience that I think Holly was mentioning as well with those team environments where you're really kind of set with people and exchanging things. And you just get find yourself so engaged. You're actually looking forward to those DQs every week because you always walk away with nuggets of knowledge beyond just the curriculum. Yeah. Holly, what would you what would you say about um, you know, taking something from a classmate? Yeah, I, I probably should have added this as my fun fact, but um, my <laughs> husband was also in the program at oh. the same time. And so we would call in from different sides of the house. We tried our best to not be enrolled in the same courses, but there were a couple <laughs> that we ended up being in the same ones and staring at yeah. each other on the screen. So it was it was fun dinner talk when we had to start talking about uh, the case studies that we were reading every single week and deciding what uh, we agreed with and what we didn't. But, um, but yeah, similar to Travis, I could probably go on um, a long tangent about what I learned. But I think what was most interesting was in classes like corporate strategy, where I come from a more business background and have been in a, an e-commerce corporate environment. When I heard how um, folks that were in, you know, the healthcare industry or in the military in particular talked about how they transitioned into mm -hmm. the corporate environment or gave examples of how that, you know, overlaid into their environment was just so completely different and new to me that I had I had no exposure to before. Um, so just learning about a, a different world was really valuable to me. Yeah. Uh, Claire, do you have something to add? Sure, I'll just share. Uh, so Auburn's program is actually entirely asynchronous for the online portion. So um, just to touch on that last piece, it's, it's kind of interesting the way it's set up. I mean, you do have deadlines and things, but you're very much allowed to work, you know, kind of within the window of your own pace. Mm -hmm. um, every class did have a team component. And what I would say I learned was associated with that team component. So I've been you know out in the world for a number of years worked with lots of different people but in these particular instances uh, it became apparent really really quickly that I wasn't going to be good at everything or be the best at everything so so for me I think recognizing that it's okay to be okay and I think organically in getting a master's in business administration you know a big piece of that is is leadership and how do you lead and motivate a team. So learning to kind of identify people's strengths and then match up team kind of deliverables based on what each person was really, really good at is something I didn't really expect to learn or think about, but that I think I walked away with a lot more experience. And so I appreciated that a lot. Yeah. And uh, Leela, what about you? I could tell many, many stories, <laughs> but um, I think I probably would say, uh, with, well, with Kelly, I mentioned that a lot of it was synchronous and, and Holly, yes, we did have all the deliverables that were asynchronous and, and all the work that was asynchronous in preparation of the synchronous classes. But in addition, we came together um, for two weeks over the two years of the program for a one week immersion um, each for twice. Um, so we would do a case study competition together and you'd be thrown together with people who you'd never met before and, and go through the entire week and become really close with that cohort of um, people who were in that immersive program. So the networking, as, as um, Travis mentioned, is ongoing and we are there for each other. We're a support network for each other. I'll just point out a couple of really um, meaningful people that I had met and, and um, things that I've learned from them. One was the former ambassador to Thailand. He was in my um, consulting class. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so I learned a lot about um, negotiation and understanding um, people from different cultures from him. And it was just fascinating to listen to his perspective. And we are um, friends to this day. So it's, oh, it's fun to, another one was, um, I was nervous to take my quant class because I had never had anything like that before being, you know, having degrees in classical music performance. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I told, he was in my ops class, a teammate in my ops class, a, a guy who worked for Northrop Grumman at the time. And he said, we're going to get you to love Excel. So, <laughs> so we teamed up. We, it was just a two-person team in, um, in the quant class. 
And I have to say, just having a person to work with and kind of um, bounce ideas off of who was so familiar with that kind of um, subject material was really beneficial. But because I was so new at it, I had a I was I was very detail oriented and I always read the instructions really, really well. So I caught mistakes that he made because he was, you know, yeah. <laughs> so comfortable with it. So it just the supportive environment and the networking, I think, is helpful, but you can't help but but learn something from each other. So I, I think that's a really beneficial part to this as I said in the beginning, to having um, colleagues who are really well-versed in what they're doing and out there in the world doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Claire, we'll move on to, I guess, probably a question on a lot of people's minds if they're considering um, doing an online MBA. What are your uh, tips and tricks for balancing it all? You have work, uh, school, family, and personal lives. How, what advice do you have for managing all that together? Claire? Sure. So one thing that sounds really simple, but that was absolute survival for me was using my calendar. Um, it's not a complicated solution, but it's incredibly effective. I was very fortunate that I had, um, you know, a manager and an employer who's incredibly supportive of me pursuing my education. But at the same time, obviously, I still had a job to do and deliverables that had to be met in that space. Mm -hmm. So I was able to kind of squeeze in um, times that that I had available to work on coursework. And then obviously in the evenings, um, did a lot of schoolwork after my kids were in bed. It's just a reality, but that's OK. Um, <laughs> But one thing that I, that I think I learned to prioritize along the way was just some time for me. Um, and I would encourage anybody who, you know, pursues this or just in general in life to make sure you do that as well, because your, your mental and physical health is incredibly important. I think we've all seen that in the last couple of years with COVID. Um, so something I started doing was intentionally taking time for me to just go and get some physical exercise. And I would recommend that to anybody. I think it probably saved my sanity. So <laughs> that's something I would consider. Great, great, great piece of advice. Lisa, what about you? Yeah, I think that time management is a key issue. Also, we studied a lot about um, being efficient and efficiency. Well, I think my efficiency level increased by 100%. <laughs> so, and part of that is that you learn not to be a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. um, studying classical music is all about being a perfectionist. And so flipping that on its head and learning, you know, the 80-20 rule, I, I had never heard of that before. <laughs> so, so it was a, a world opening to me and I had to figure out how to get everything done in a limited amount of time and still keep my sanity, like, like uh, Claire was mentioning. Going for a walk every day is really good. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Travis. Well, I think we'll all probably agree on time management as far as a skill set, but it is just that a skill set. Some of us naturally are just good at it. We are born into it almost. It's just natural. Others, you can't make a deadline or get somewhere on time to save your life, but it is a skill you can learn. I would just say more than that, though, because that's something I think um, Claire mentioned very well with the calendar. It's such a powerful tool. But for anybody looking at the programs out there and saying, is this the right time for an MBA? Can I take this on? The easiest thing to do is just look at your life right now and think, you know, 10, 15 hours a week, probably for any of these programs would be a sufficient, sufficient amount of time to consider towards your coursework and say, look at my day to day. Where am I spending my time on a weekly basis? I guarantee all of us can find things we can trim out or move around. And that's what it really boils down to is, is this a worthwhile activity for you to put your time and energy into? And if yeah. you're going to pursue an MBA, which is one of the most prestigious business degrees out there, you're going to make an investment of time, energy, and money. So why not nurture that investment so that it pays off threefold and it's worth your time and energy to do it? So like anything else in your life, if it matters to you, you make the time. And that's just the reality of, of juggling everything we juggle in the real world. And this is something that I think everybody will agree with. Yes, it's extra work. Yes, it's extra time. But as Leela very eloquently described, you're going to see as you go through the program how you transition, you transform, you get better at time management. These skills start to adapt so that by the time you're done with that MBA then you graduate and you don't have that coursework anymore, you're almost looking around saying, well, what do I do with these extra 15, 20 hours a week? It does magnify or multiply what you're capable of. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in our last five minutes, I want to give everybody a chance to, um, to answer this question. So um, we'll just 
we'll start with uh, Holly, um, but I want to know what would you say are the, um, you know, the most important hallmarks of your experience, the things that, that you'll remember the most um, and that, you know, might help describe what kind of ex um, experience to expect for people who are considering an online MBA. Go ahead, Holly. Yeah, so kind of similar to the last question that was asked, I think my personal growth and seeing how far I could push myself, which was a lot further than I thought, mm -hmm. um, was, was a big deal for me. I mean, anybody considering an MBA, it, it is a lot of work. I, I don't think you can jump in and think that it's going to be a breeze. It, it won't be. Um, and at the beginning, it's going to feel more overwhelming than it is as you go through and toward the end. And I love that Leo brought up um, the 80-20 at some point you'll figure out, maybe I don't need to read this case study through and through three <laughs> times, you know? <laughs> you will figure out where you need to spend your time based on what you need to understand more about. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, yeah, just learning about my personal limits and boundaries, I think was, was um, you know, really exciting for me. And then um, just going back to the, the people that I met in the program, given it was completely virtual, I am still friends with many of them. Um, some of them I've never actually met in person, but I've kept in touch with so many. I've been able to um, have, you know, meetings on the business side from connections that they've helped me make. Uh, so the, the network and those connections um, just continue to pay dividends. Yeah. What about you, Claire? Hallmark experience. So I, I would echo Holly a little bit there. For me, it's really all about the relationships um, and the connections that I walked away and that I know that I'll maintain. So yes, I feel like I learned a tremendous amount um, on the business side, you know, on the book side, absolutely um, came away with a, a common language. Someone mentioned earlier that as I know, as I move through my career in different roles at different companies that I'll be able to tie in and have good understanding and, and insight into those things. But I also walked away with this family um, of, of Auburn alumni. And, you know, it's so funny. I was on a trip for spring break and I had on something that said Auburn and in the airport, somebody said War Eagle. And, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's everywhere, you know, it's really recognized. And I think that's something that's really, really unique and valuable that, you know, you can start up a conversation anywhere just with the simple recognition. So that's been really awesome. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Leela. Yes, I, I mean, yeah, I love that, that we walk away with a family and we're part of something bigger. More than that, what I took away from it, the most meaningful thing that I took away from it is understanding how the world works better. Um, as a non-business major, um, I did not know how things worked. And now I feel like I touched on many different areas. Um, and from economics to uh, strategy, to thinking through problems and decision-making leadership, there's so much more that I can get out of life having this framework of the course structure that the MBA um, taught me, and I'm grateful for it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, quick, Travis, what about you? Well, to keep it brief, I would just say you know, JW, my, my MBA experience, it was definitely transformational. It was definitely empowering for my career. It definitely helped with my confidence to be comfortable in front of any C-suite organization, et cetera. But the biggest key takeaway for me would be two things. It would be the impact of the role of people and how that is the integral foundation of all things business, regardless of your discipline or anything else, and how understanding how to lead both individuals that you're in charge of, but also laterally and up and how impactful that could be in situations. But most importantly, how much I still didn't know. Um, I walked away with a degree at the end of it all. And, you know, you've got these credentials and all it did was leave me with more questions than I had answers. And that's really the truth of it all is the journey, educating yourself, being better. That's never going to stop or it shouldn't stop if you're really trying to always be your best. But this MBA will definitely send you down the right direction. Absolutely. Well, there's no better place to get advice um, from other people who have already made the decision. And we really appreciate you taking all the time from your um, busy lives to join us um, today. If any of the viewers have questions about some of the things um, that uh, these panelists discussed, go um, to the 
go to their school websites and you'll find a lot of information. And again, thank you all and uh, have a great day. Thank you. All the best, everybody. Stay safe.